God damn, I'm like fucking greasy as shit. I'm looking myself all shiny. God damn. I just got a haircut, but it's all it's all uh, it's kind of splitting in the front that I don't I don't like that. Like, <laughs> you got to get that side part. Yeah. What's what's cool now? What's the cool one? Like one of them's like like center part. One of them like center parting and side parting is like. There's like a cool one to do and then an uncool one to do. I'm gonna say that um, side parting is slightly more stylish. I think, and and I think the center parting, okay. center parting can look stylish, but it could also look like like a Dutch boy. It could, it could be really bad. <laughs> so I, I've 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 tampered with both. I, I usually the way I do my hair is basically I you know get out of the shower and then I start to comb my hair back. Uh, with a thicker comb, not like one of those finer, like a like a more coarse uh-huh. comb, and just see what happens with the rest of the day. So I like I flick it back, <laughs> yeah. Godfather style, and then see what happens. Um, no, I, yeah, that's that that's basically my thing. That's that's, now, that's, that's your grooming tips on this Lost Beat Six show. We're welcome to have welcome back to the Lost Beat Six show, Beefer Pot, Beefer Book Club um, edition. This is the last one that's going to be on a Monday uh, before we actually have real guests and real people back on. <laughs> All right, yeah, and, you won't have to listen to me anymore, everyone. Well, <laughs> thank God. We'll, we'll 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 revert back to our Thursday time, th- Friday times. We'll still do this, uh, <laughs> like every other Thursday, every other Friday. It'll be out every other Friday anyway, um, and then we'll figure out how to kind of fill in the gaps as we go. Because I still want to have the main show at the beginning of the week and the f- not the not fun show or not the more fun show, but the more loose <laughs> the, uh, yeah, diatribes. The um, where we can kick it with, because you've been you've been awesome, because Kane hanging out with us, uh, Sean. So thanks for yeah, definitely. And so you are not going away. Um, in, All right, in my opinion, oh, you're stuck with me forever, everybody. <laughs> All your listeners so, at home. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, I think uh, uh, I I made a. Uh, we'll start it with this because I I made and I I didn't keep tabs on what time the um, get back. Uh, documentary slash, you know, like the Peter Jackson uncar- uh, archive, like unarchived a shitload of uh, Beatles, like uh, oh Twi- yeah, Twickenham, like get let it be, get back sessions, mm-hmm. which is the one everybody like doesn't really want to watch because it's like <laughs> I'd rather not watch a band break up in front of my face. It's kind of awkward seeing Paul like run the show, right? So like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and like George is an anti-authority, like. And so, anyway, but I've been, it's been kind of just to prepare myself for it. I'm not sure how exactly I got back into it, but um, I think it was the Paul McCartney TV show that he did with Rick Rubin. But I ended up um, uh, deep diving on on Beatles work, and I have, over the years, picked up a shitload of books that I've sort of just, like, not disrespected, but just kind of had in my library that I just didn't oh, yeah. think was relevant because I had the giant coffee table book of the Beatles anthology. Yeah. <laughs> you ever have that? Do you have that? Uh, oh, do you, well, I, I don't have that one, but I, I mean, I've got similar, I've got similar cases of like, uh, of like, I've got like a whole collection. I've got, a, I've got, you know, a small library related to my favorite subjects. And then, you know, it's like, I've never, I, I haven't gone through all of them, but it's the, you know, what if I need this one though? Yeah. Th- this book, <laughs> the Beatles anthology book is an account as an accompaniment to the TV show, the TV show and the, the box set album. Okay. Um, and it was actually for me, like someone, a friend of mine gave it to me on my like f- f- 10th birthday or something. I think it must've been Oh three. Holy shit. <laughs> before. Uh, and I've had it ever since. And it's like kind of cool because it had the, uh, a, a photo of the two virgins album cover with john and yoko like uh oh nice you nice. know yeah uh, um and i'm like and i remember rolling through it and my mom's like oh, oh look at that <laughs> 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 and we just kind of left it let it go like whatever like, this is disturbing um <laughs> uh but anyway uh the funny thing about that was uh that for me for years was like the authority of the Beatles history because it was their, them telling you us what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And you realize I kind of, and, and, and ever since I got into the Dan Carlin world, it's like, that's their primary accounts, but that might not be the most realistic accounts either based on yeah, true. <laughs> their opinions <laughs> of it. So like based on, you know, John's, John's opinion has a tendency to, to wane from d- <laughs> day to day. I believe he's complete, being completely honest with you at that time like you know yeah, within, I believe, 
within his own framework, I'm sure yeah. he's probably honest. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe Paul uh, is very politically savvy as tar- in terms of how he may or may not have been influential or uh, 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 dis- destructive in the uh, policy of the Beatles. And I think George might be the more straight shooter that affected. He doesn't really like to be, he's very kind of uh, anti-authoritarian by policy. So he's always he, like, mm-hmm. if someone's going to tell him to do something, he's going to have that. He was, he would have that at no, <laughs> like just, just, just out of the sake <laughs> of not wanting to do it, just because you want me to do it. I really don't want to do it now. I want to do it less. Um, then you want me to do it. So, um, and then Ringo is f- Ringo. I, I, I don't want to, not to poop, not to downplay Ringo, but I think the, no, nah, let's shit all over Ringo. <laughs> let's just fucking, this is a Ringo hate podcast. Uh, I think he's his, his anthology, uh, uh, is not that I'm not saying that the anthology is inaccurate by any sense, but I feel like it's, I need to have other historical um, biographies and writings on this kind of to give me a better, a different perspective, a more historical one. So anyway, this is all leading up to, I finally got around to reading the Bob Spitz uh, biography on the Beatles. It's like this giant like Bible. He's actually coming out with a Led Zeppelin one this, oh, this shit. later this year, but it's the one that looked like this uh, for viewers. Right, not looking right. at the, and um, <laughs> I've had it in my, on my my um, library for years. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Don't need it, but that's cool. And I'm like, that <laughs> nah, might be a good to- idea. And there's also a book on Paul McCartney, like called Fab, I think, that I'm gonna check out too. Not by Bob Spitz, by somebody else. Um, so that one looks like a slightly easier read, but um, cool, cool. Actually, the problem with this book actually is it's it's good, but it has <laughs> it has um a little bit, and I have to be careful because I kind of want Dennis McNally on the show. Um, but it has this kind of like a lot of music document, music biographies have this tendency to like cliffhang chapters that have this sort of like, <laughs> little did they know this would be the most historical thing that ever happened. Like years later, it'd be like, um, oh, they're you know, taking the, like, so they're like, taking like the RL Stein the, goosebumps approach where it's like have, every like, chapter ends with a bad, it's not even every scare. chapter, it's every sub chapter too. So it's like this weight, <laughs> <laughs> this weight of a cliffhanger of the history and the magic about to happen. It's like, you know, we don't need to do that every time. It's like the Beatles. It's it's or it's it's uh, they just left the Casbah Club, man. They're they're just uh, you know. Yeah, when they're fucking yeah, when it, when they're living fucking legends, well, it's yeah. like yeah, everything they do is kind of mythologized. It's like you yeah. don't need to play it up. <laughs> right. So they're he he's playing a little bit. I I want to get out of the myth. That's also what I liked about the anthology was it got out of myth, out of the mythology too of like mm-hmm. that magical time in Hamburg where they went from. They got their 10,000 hours in, you know? Yeah. Um, and they're just like, wow, that was a lot of sex. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was uh, new. Um, so that, that's what I've been uh, digging into there. That's been kind of a fun, fun. Uh, oh, right on, right on. Read, because that's, it's, it's, it's the Beatles, man. I think, um, I, I think also what happened is I listened from front to back all the albums, um, too. I'm like, wow. Good stuff. Oh fuck yeah! So yeah. what? So now that you've uh, now that you, I don't even think I've listened to all of them like front to back. I I, I mean I generally just consider US. them to no, start British, with British. Uh, yeah, not U.S. albums. I, I generally just consider them to start with Sergeant Pepper's, and I don't really. <laughs> I, I, okay, look, I like uh, that's a lie. I I'm, I'm actually just lying right out of the gate. I love uh, uh, I love fucking uh, the Rubber Soul. Is that the one with? Uh, is that the one with Tax Man? No, Maybe Revolver. Revolver. No, Revolver. Revolver that's what Revolver's my yeah. favorite album. Yeah. Yeah, Revolver's um, pretty solid. That's like a good one, like all the way through. There's like a level to that where where um one of the reasons I do like Revolver is like that's the last album where they kind of seem to be kind of a unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> and they didn't completely just like, okay. We're done. Like, like, cause that was like, this is a John song and here's the Paul song and here's the, right. here's the George song. Yeah. And, and not to say they didn't do that in Sergeant Pepper, but like that was the last, um, it feels like from them point out, like that point out, like George kind of says like it was <laughs> everything. I think cause they took, he took that India trip. Uh, he, he went on like a six week vacation to India after mm-hmm. the last, uh, candlestick show. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he was like, 
yeah, everything after that felt like just like hard work, man. I just didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Jesus. Man. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so I just didn't, my heart really didn't have it in it for Sergeant Pepper all that much. And then Ringo's like, it's a good album, but I learned to play chess on it. Cause it was like everybody else doing overdubs was like, it was so overdubbed. Holy shit. So, yeah. It, it is like super, like that album's more that that's sort of like the, like the George Martin, uh, showcase album. Yeah. Between George, like George many, Martin and, and Paul how many Carter. like studio tricks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like how many George, studio yeah. tricks can we throw on this, on this crazy motherfucker? But I actually, for me, I wanted to listen back to the early stuff too, like the original, um, the first, like the Please Please Me and With the Beatles. I still like With the Beatles a lot. I still like, um, I still like Hard Day's Night a lot. I still like Beatles for Sale a lot. I like a lot of those early. <laughs> I think, I, I think part. I guess what it comes into. I, I do have a quite. Let me ask you this question. The first time you ever heard the Beatles, where? What was the? What was the? album or era oh dude it was uh um i remember my my it was like my mom bought uh one you know that one it's like it's like all the number one hits so yep, i was like that, a, i was a huge poser so i was listening to the greatest hits album that's not that's, that's well i that was me too actually to like it was fourth grade 2002 and like i saw paul mccartney at the super bowl and oh yeah like, all right all right mom we're getting beatles stuff we're getting the Beatles one that has seems to have all the hits. Let's do that. Oh yeah, I mean that's a that's a good, that's a, a pretty good primer. Primer, yeah. You can't do. It's like you know, I I say it's the greatest hits, but it's like thirty fucking songs or something like that. So, you know, it's it's pretty comprehensive. It gives you you know you're, you're getting you're getting a couple of songs off of every album. Yeah, and, and, and a lot uh, of songs that are not on the album either. Like you get up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but I mean, it's, it's 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 all stuff, you know. It's all stuff you'd know, but it's okay. It's but it's good. It's good shit. And I think okay. maybe the first actual CD was probably had Magical Mystery Tours sitting around. Okay. And uh, I think then after that, it was probably uh, then it was Sergeant Pepper's, and then it was probably Rubber Soul or Revolver. And no, that's a lie. Abbey Road, I always had my dad had that on vinyl and would just like listen to that. So Abbey Road was around, but that was like okay. kind of before I was really like a musician, you know? So I didn't really get it. Like as a kid, I was kind of like, yeah, whatever. You know, you listen to some of those songs. And it's like not until you're, you know, not until you're, it's like later, it's like you listen to like that whole fucking second half of Abbey Road and you're like, this is fucking nuts. <laughs> You gotta have a little more musical appreciation. You have to have a very high Q, high IQ to appreciate Abbey Road. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's you it's, have to have a, a, a grasp of, of concepts and theoretical physics. <laughs> or 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 in Maxwell's case, pataphysics. Pataphysics, yeah, yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't even fucking realize that was a pataphysics song until I read that fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, study pataphysical path sciences in the yard or whatever he called it. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the uh, yeah, my brief history. My my was for me. It was the one, and then I eventually. I remember hearing in my on my. This is kind of interesting because it's it's taking me back. One of my um, one of my late my childhood friend uh, from from God, you don't know how long, but he was a neighbor of mine. Um, you know, he passed away, uh, five years ago mm -hmm. and his, his mom recently had, uh, had also passed. Um, so it's, it was kind of bringing back a lot of memories. And then, um, I remember in their house, you know, his, his, his dad was a big Beatles fan. Uh, mm -hmm. they, he's a, he's, he, he's of that age. So he had a uh, rubber soul. I remember running into rubber soul, um, at a borders, but oh think, man! Uh, very quick, you know, and, and then uh, who remembers uh, fucking borders? <laughs> We're already dating ourselves. Uh, and they had, and I, I noticed the the look. There's that Beatles look, the suits, the ties, the things. And I saw them with that look, wearing those like leather and suede jackets. Oh um, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, that is a cool look, and that is a cool pose. And I listened to the first song that was "Drive My Car." And I'm like, this 
it just like that riff kind of kicks you in the teeth and like yeah <laughs> yeah that's a that's a good that's a good one I, that that song slaps uh, yeah and then that whole album i got that whole album and then eventually i got please i got like the big like the book i got bookended you know book into mm-hmm. the pure middle so i had please please me like not even like their hits it was just like you know the it was like early early stage shows and then i got abbey road which is i still count as i'm a purist i count that as the last album they ever recorded his last album they made um and then um rubber soul in the middle so it's like and then eventually that got filled in by um sergeant peppers and the white album eventually so in high school so anyway not really that important but um it was sort of an interesting kind of like um mainly because a lot of uh a lot of um zoomers and youtubers have this like tendency to kind of like really pick apart the early years and i'm like this is not worth it. like for example like the oh the beatles were like a boy band and i'm like <laughs> no they were <laughs> you know yeah it's like yeah it's like fuck off <laughs> yeah no no yeah it's cool to hate the beatles now it's like it's come back around to it, it's come back around to like zoomers <laughs> who like don't like rock music being like yeah fuck the beatles it's like grandpa rock now it's like it's grandpa's like the beatles guitars. is like yeah yeah, they're like, yeah, what is this guitar? It's like, this is like a baby's toy. <laughs> what are these like? What are these campy, cheesy lyrics about girls holding hands? Like, like, I- well, this is like, you know what it is? The Beatles is like, uh, it's like, like swing jazz ballroom music now. <laughs> it's like to us, like, holy shit, that's like great grandpa music. It's like, yeah, that's fucking, that's the Beatles, that's, man. We're yeah. about 10 years away from that being great grandpa music. <laughs> it's it's such a it's an interesting so that that's sort of like my I'm going on a mainly because I kind of want to get into the Hamburg the early development Hamburg stuff and um, mm-hmm. I think uh, um, that and just early it's interesting to talk about those early years and how much shit got done within mainly two years uh, considering or three years if you talk sixty three to sixty six or sixty four to sixty six like it's um, the time the time lapse is like insanely productive. I don't think I can I can can't think of any more productive music act ever in those years alone. Um, so anyway, that's that's um, that's kind of what I've been doing. Just diving into that. Nice, nice. So, and then I'll, I'll I'll talk about a couple more things. But what what do you, what do you got? Oh boy. Uh let's see. This week uh I've been fucking around with rewatching Dragon Ball. I don't know if I've I don't think I've talked about that yet on the pod. Um no. yeah. Rewatching fucking Dragon Ball. That's a trip. Uh I never really got super into like Dragon Ball Z when it was when it was huge, you know, which uh-huh. probably would have been when I was like in elementary school. That was like it, the, yeah, yeah. That was like prime time for that. Um so now I'm just gonna I'm just kind of like revisiting it. I got the I bought a a bootlegged DVD for pretty cheap. That's just like the whole series. It's like a it's a lot, man. It's like 160 episodes, something like that. I'm about I'm about halfway through. Like I think I'm on episode 70, or I'm coming up on it. Um, it's it's pretty good. Um, I I can't believe that show is still so fucking popular and it hasn't been canceled yet. Because, like, retroactively, that show is fucked up. I mean, like, most of the plot points of the first half is just, like, Bulma constantly being, like, molested and, like, threatened with sexual assault. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, she's, like, fucking 16, man. And it's just, like, Master Roshi spends the whole first half of the show just, like, yeah, man, want anything? I'm, I need, I'm gonna need to see them titties. <laughs> <laughs> need some help? I'm gonna need some pants too. It's it's fucking it's fucking hysterical. Also, Bulma's was like literally like the worst character because I, I I you know you, she's kind of the mascot character for the show. You know, she's the uh, she's the the fan thirst character, but she's just an awful human being. And uh, I mean, I guess a lot of that gets. A lot of that in the first series is like, yeah, she's 16 and she's like a spoiled rich kid or whatever. But I mean, then you realize, yeah, she fucks Vegeta later. Like, 
<laughs> like this guy literally tries to like, destroy the planet like several times. And, like, <laughs> and then she like fucks him later and has his fucking kid, man. <laughs> oh dear. Like, that's that's fucked up. This is more adult than I remember it being. Y- yeah, yeah, you yeah. Um, so yeah. Well there's my- yeah, on top of that, there's there's a there's a bunch of just like super fucking there's like like the villain is like there's like an obviously gay villain and then like he's like oh I don't like girls and then everyone's like oh my god he's fucking gay ew <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like oh shit it's like, told me this no one told me this about Dragon Ball that it's it's all like uh, you know it's just like fucked up like Japanese boomer humor. Where it's just like, oh, gays, ha huh, huh. It's like, oh, girls are so fucking dumb. <laughs> like, girls just want to fuck all the time. So, like, yeah, rewatching it, it's just like, Jesus Christ, man. That's funny. Uh- yeah. I'll, you ever, yeah, like, you ever see, like, the fucking, like, you know, you know, Mr. Popo, like, the, like, the black, he's like the, he's like a genie character who just looks like a racist black cartoon from, like, the 30s. Uh no, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll send you a fucking picture. I will um, say we'll there's get... there's a couple times uh in 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 like my what do you call it uh I was watching a couple things like a history. Of, this is not a recommendation of what I've been doing, but like I, re- I rewatched Help, which has a oh, lot nice. of like <laughs> have a lot of like oh it's a, it's it's like it's an, an it's some sort of weird Hindu cult. Obviously, I'm gonna send you uh. We're gonna get Steve's live reaction here. Uh, I'm gonna okay. send you the, a picture of uh, Bulma, the worst character in the show, uh, meeting Mr. Popo for the first time. Uh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> um... Oh yeah, yeah. That's, yeah sorry. <laughs> uh, that yeah, I, I remember. That's you know, I've been on 4chan. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, you could tell my reaction was like whatever because I've been on 4chan. Um, <laughs> and, oh, like I think that it's if you watch this show, it's obvious that uh, Mr. Popo is supposed to be a little more of like a magical creature uh-huh. than uh, you know than just because that there are black characters in Dragon Ball. It's like they are still kind of drawn in that. Uh, you know, in like old timey racist cartoon style, but they are obviously more human than like Mr. Popo is. So, right, right. I don't know. We'll leave. Uh, I'll leave this one to the liberal arts majors to or maybe suss don't. this one out. I don't know if it's but, worth keeping around. Maybe you want to hold off on that. Uh, but I will say, I mean, uh, they. I think in, in like newer stuff, it's like they they do like a Jinx from Pokemon thing now, where they just make him purple. Instead oh. of like, just black, <laughs> sure. I'm, like, I'm like, is that more fucked up? Like, well, is it more fucked up to just it, make him purple? <laughs> that's that's an interesting take because that when was that show made? Uh, 80s, like the, uh, okay. the manga, the original manga, I think started in maybe like the like mid 80s. Okay, so I was I was thinking about this for a minute because I I remember I, like there's little details I could always think about that I'm like, man, if they showed this today and like. People did not have the context or the patience. We'd have a pro. We'd have, like just be. You just have to have the hammer down. Well, I just think people just fucking forgot about it. Because I mean, like, who the fuck? Uh, well, who the fuck like, watches? Uh, I mean, I mean, like, I don't know. I guess Super like, Dragon Ball like, Super is still around right now, and it's still hot shit. But I, I don't know how much Mr. Popo content yeah. we have in the new ones. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, like, and I'm still thinking of not anime. So I'm thinking of like. I was watching a, a clip of Monty Python's Life of Brian when John Cleese is in like a blackface. Yeah, uh, yeah, because yeah. Because he's one of the wise. <laughs> he's one of the three wise men, and they didn't have. There's no black people in Monty Python, obviously. Not obviously, <laughs> but maybe obviously some not others. But like, um, like it's a, it's a, like, um, or or like the help. I was watching Help, and there was a, um, you know, the whole the whole half the one of the antagonists is this, this specific hindu cult or indian cult and you know they're always just going like ringo's just going it's just a different religion from ours <laughs> like, <laughs> i just don't i don't describe i don't and they're always going it's eastern you know they were it's, and they they were walking down a they're going to this indian restaurant and hope looking for some answers uh-huh. <laughs> and like of course they're all like you're from the west and it's like these guys in, in like <laughs> Indian out like uh, sort of uh, uh, 
Are they just like j- j- they're just like, like English dudes she... painted brown for? No, no, they're they're <laughs> they're they're, they're uh, dressed in like uh, sort of a, a Indian co- uh-huh. garments. They got the and turbans costumes. and the saris. And yeah, the... yeah, and and uh, it's 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 sort of a and like or even, uh, it's a little. <laughs> Well, or even with, like that, a, that moment where like I was watching uh, the anthology. Where, one could where, say it is a cartoonish stereotype of an Indian person. Yeah. yeah well, he that they made a point that they're all British people working in the restaurant. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of the joke. But I think part of what I was, was going with was the fact that the, uh, um, or even when like John Lennon was doing the clap your hands and stop your feet and stuff, and it was, you know, the way I think it was. <laughs> It was referenced in the. I rewatched that because I, mem- I remember like like Google like uh, some blog think piece you know made a point of going. John Lennon was actually some sort of was, was insensitive to uh, you know mentally. Yeah, handicapped. John Lennon was insensitive. Yeah, that's all you have to say. John Lennon was like insensitive. Period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I remember Paul McCartney in the '90s, like the anthology, going. Yeah, I mean, like he was sort of defending it in a way, and I didn't mind it. I still kind of don't mind it, but the. Um, like you know, because he was suggesting like, yeah, we're not gonna go. Come on, come on, let's go. Like we're not gonna take ourselves that seriously. So John, being like, to like, would just go, clap your hands, stomp your feet, and like, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I, like I said, who knows? Like, I don't think, uh, I don't really know what to make of that anymore. I also. Yeah. yeah well, don't uh, I'll reiterate. We're I. I'll, I'll reiterate. We're dirt bag left. So we're we're, we're yeah. sassy, we're sassy leftists, and that's a good. Uh, or maybe maybe we grew up we grew up too hard, we grew up under the influence of boomers too hard. We're too old. We're not part of the younger generation. So we're just like, oh, you kids, and whatever, well, also, man. Well, I said I I, I want to go on a limb here, and I'll, I'll I'm going to echo Eric, and we don't subscribe to the culture war that the. Uh, the elites are throwing, throw, or, or having us wage within each other, between each other. So, there you go. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll agree to that. Yeah. Also, I think that trying to cancel Dragon Ball at this point is like, you know, it's like trying to cancel Harry Potter. It's like, <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> it's like let's just. It's like maybe at some point it's like, it, it, at some point it's like what what at what point does it become a a, a cultural artifact? where it doesn't need an author anymore. Like, I feel like that's where... We're, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. that's where we're at with, like, Dragon Ball. It's like, let's just give it... Let's just it's give it back like, to the people. It's like, it's like let's just ignore... Are we talking about, like, Lewis Carroll, George Lucas type of, like, world-building, Tolkien word, world-building? Yeah, I, like, I, I, yeah. These I, have I, been I established. Like, it's like, well, we can can't... It's like, it's like, yeah, it's already, like... It's like, you can try to cancel it, but, I mean, like, for the last 30 years, it's been the most popular anime in the world, so... It's like it's already made its money, so I'm like, you can cancel it, or you can just be like, all right, well, we'll just yeah. give it. That we'll also, give it to the people. It's like the people our- will take it back, and we'll make our own. <laughs> all the Mr. Popos will be purple. We won't have any more. We and won't my- have any more fucking like ancient, like conservative uh, Japanese boomer humor in this. It's like we can we can let it grow now. <laughs> in, in my in my Beatles parallel, I, I was we were talking about. The, I was thinking about the uh, "We're bigger than God" kind of. Mm-hmm. We're bigger than Jesus, and uh, you know, of course, I remember the, the the ultimate. Just like I used to be, I used to like scorn the South for being so like uptight about those things, and now I just sort of laugh. I'm just like, because <clears throat> it's just like I, I remember the, the Eric Idle in the Ruddles was like, they made. They, the Ruddles made off. People burned their albums. People bought them just to burn them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> burn away, guys. Yeah, it's you want some, situations. You want some more? We'll sell you some more if you want to burn our trash. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, you know, like Harry Potter. It's like, it's like, I feel like the, it's like, yeah, it's like J.K. Rowling's like kind of a piece of shit. And it's like, it's like, well, she already got all her money. So about the, uh, about the best we can do now is, you know, it's like, it's like, think of all the, just like the young queer kids who love Harry Potter. It's like, they've basically just taken it back. So I'm sure. like, let's take, I'm like, we, we got to do that with Dragon Ball. We got to, we have to queer the space that Dragon Ball occupies. A hashtag take back Dragon Ball, you guys. Gay oh. Goku. Hashtag <laughs> gay Goku. 
I want well, to defeat the next fucking immortal god or whatever by sucking his dick. Can I can I make a thought? Make, sucking make, his dick and I'm saying I'm just gonna throw it out rights. there that if it's if there's any racist content within Dragon Ball, which is a Japanese program made in Japan, that it, w- would it not be a thing if it was like? Uh, maybe I, I think maybe, like maybe I cut this. It is like, so it's just like I, oh, we don't go after them because it's not American. We're going after American racism only. You know, like, yeah, like, it is a completely different cultural context. Also, there's like barely any black people in Japan, so to like uh, portray them as like mythical creatures is like, I guess it's understandable. But well, well, don't ask, do that. Don't do that, everybody. What's what's Alexis's thoughts on all this? You know, being that we're two white guys. Oh, I was. Uh, uh, she thinks it's hilarious. She 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 also thinks it's hilarious. Okay. My fiance, my fiance is black. Everybody, look, I have black friends. It's impossible for me to be racist. I want to make sure that we have all. You know, we're- <laughs> <laughs> it's literally impossible. It cannot happen. <laughs> It'd be funny if you're like, I have black like, these friends. Are jokes, right? It's I gotta okay. Clarify, I gotta clarify <laughs> that these are jokes because we live in like the we live in like a like a post truth like information soup world, so sure. we can't. You can't just say things that are ridiculous because you can't say things that are obviously ridiculous that no one would take seriously because there are people who just say ridiculous things in complete earnest and expect people to take them seriously. I'm going to to lose a job and or uh, not get a job because someone's going to dig this up. Yeah, someone's um, gonna dig this up and take me (laughs) out of God. I'd actually if that actually happened to me like. I should have made more money at this. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my future anyway. wife is black. Everybody, so co- context. Um, also, yeah, she thinks it's just, a, she thinks it's hilarious. It's not. She's, yeah, she's, I'm not letting you off. It's not letting you off the hook. I just want to know what her what her perspective. She is. has the same. She has the same opinion that I do. Where it's just like, wow, that's fucked up. Too late now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like what are, I'm like yeah it's like you just like you watch it and enjoy it and then just be like yeah that's real fucked up let's not let's not do that in the future and not yeah. support shows now that do the same thing you know <laughs> <laughs> nice I have um I got uh excuse me I got moving on I got um two two more things. Um, and I, I finished, I kind of burned, I, I just kind of rolled through two audio books. Oh, I nice. This is books. One was, um, me, um, the mem- memoir of, um, Marco Pierre White. Do you know who he is? I have no idea who that is. Okay. So Marco Pierre White is like the first, um, he's a, he's a chef. He's a, he's like, okay. And in, in, in sort of a celebrity chef. He's kind of like, he was the first one. He was the first chef. He's an English too, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. an Italian mom, but somehow they, he got a French middle name, uh, and he's completely, he's from like Leeds. So, um, he was the first, uh, youngest chef to, and first British chef to win three Michelin stars. And then oh, famously nice. kind of, uh, took them back at the height of his career. He's, he, he kind of like decided to turn them in and kind of like lay low and kind of, he, he's a strange, he's an interesting guy. Cause he's, you get like, after being in the Bourdain, um, universe and Bourdain was a big <laughs> fan of his too. Um, and this guy was like the uh, uh, what do you call it? Like, Gordon Ramsay was like one of his like sous chefs. One of one of oh his, okay, like, gotcha. So it was a pupil of his. And um, what was interesting is that that uh, this guy it, you hear about like the sh- the cooking world in terms of um, being an escape of a certain like you have have a certain mentality to do it. Uh, Mm -hmm. and so a lot of people do that as far as like, they're, um, like, you know, in and out of running in and out of the law in and out of, uh, uh, is there in and out of prison or, you know, um, uh, have, you know, substance abuse, substance abuse issues. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably one of the few, uh, it's probably one of the few uh, things that you can do like professionally and make pretty good money. Like no matter like how fucked up yeah. you are. You yeah. And, and, <laughs> it's, and it's like and low, can... low, uh, like front facing public contact, you know? So you can just be like a fucking like disgusting, like monster person yeah, or like covered in like fucking like piercings and like tattoos and shit. And like, 
Those are two different. I, I, I want to clarify that those are different things being disgusting and having tattoos. <laughs> I just mean like, you know, like covered in like mucus and like you haven't bathed for like three days. And then also you're just like, you've completely obscured your face with fucking. Well, you're, serving, know, you're like you, the cat man. You could be the cat man who like turned himself into a tiger or whatever. At the same time, preparing food for the public. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You don't have to be clean. I mean, you don't have to be clean. Technically, legally, yes. <laughs> do people actually do that? No. So anyway, the the, the after reading the and was what the reason I've been doing this is that I uh, Eric and I have been kind of marathoning, not marathoning. Oh, at a we're just kind of taking our time getting through all of like the no reservations, and then we're gonna do all of the parts unknown. So we're just kind of chuggling, chugging, chuggling. Uh, we're just kind of chugling through all the all the Bourdain shows, but, you know, Marco Piera White was in one of them, and I'm like, oh, I want to have that book on Audible, and I pick that up. And oh, so yeah. being in the Kitchen Confidential world of, like, American, like, like craziness, and and, um, and everything's got that same sort of similar brigade intensity to it. That's, that, that's kind of universal within kitchens for the most part, how everybody's super intense and, like, it's not personal and all that, that sort of thing. But this was... Um, I was looking at Marco and Marco was like where, where Bourdain like <laughs> had, it almost seemed like he wanted to have drug problems. He, and that's not, <laughs> that's not me. That's not my assumption of it. He said, I chose to take heroin because of because Like, it's like, you know, these were, these are my decisions that I wanted to make because I wanted to feel a certain way. And it's not, not yeah. even like a, not even like a search for an emptiness. He's just like, I want to be cool. Junkies are cool. I guess, and <laughs> uh, yeah, in a certain sense, I guess like, it was almost like a burrow. It was like a burrow's fantasy, I think. I was like, yeah, burrow. I was gonna say, I was, I, I was like, yeah, you he, can... he, yeah, he was a big burrow's fan, and burrow's made these claims that you could, you with the right, I think in, in the in the sixties around the Nova Express, he's like, you can, you know, no one's addicted to heroin. You just, you know, you just gotta know how to handle it. Like, yeah, uh, the thing <laughs> is, it's like William Burrows is like such like a freak alien that I would. I would like not trust anything he says about like about like anything. Like he's like the one guy who like kicked fucking heroin. <laughs> like who? And Keith, Keith oh. Richards. Yeah, I'm like I'm like yeah. That's like one out of like I'm like holy shit, man. I'm, I'm well, like J- Jimmy Page is still around. Um, yeah. <laughs> Eric Clapton's still around, and I think yeah, it's Pete like, yeah, Townsend. Maybe Those Pete guys Townsend? are all fucking millionaires. <laughs> That's why they're still around. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. They're like millionaires with like big support networks. It's like that seems to be uh, that seems to be the uh, the key factor here and who gets out of the heroin addiction and like uh-huh. who doesn't. Yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. Yeah, totally. Uh, but here, here's my here, the what was astonishing to me was that Marco was like so straight edge. He just he was like. I want to be the best fucking chef ever, ever. And that's what most of those chefs do who want to be that great. They do have that sort of like narrow minded focus and the like, and some of the sex drugs and rock and roll lifestyle is like kind of like surrounding them, but they're like tunnel vision towards what they want to do. So that was kind of interesting to like notice like how, how much he was just like, it's just like in line. I was I was expecting more of a raunchy like, oh my gosh, I was in rock bottom, and then I really worked out. Like the only things he, the only conflicts he seemed to run into is that he he like would partner up with like, or he would he, he would like burn. I don't, he wouldn't burn, but it seems like relationships would just get strained and burned out, like with Gordon mm. Ramsay or Michael Caine or whatever. Chefs are also really ornery people. Uh, I've worked in a lot of kitchens in my life and like, they're all really fucking intense and like really uh, people. Yeah. The Uh, like head chefs are always like really fucking intense people. So I imagine if you have like multiple kinds of those dudes, like in like the same space, it's like a, you know, it's a literally a too many cooks situation. So that was a, that was a fun book. uh, Oh, hell yeah. To get through. And um, I'm, it was a, enjoyable and it was good um and i have one more but do you have anything uh you know i, I would uh, i would add to that i just read this really interesting book called uh, mastery i think the guy's name is george leonard he's like an aikido teacher and he just sort of i i think it's it's sort of a uh uh i suppose a counterpoint it's a, it's a little self-helpy but it's kind of interesting um it, he, he just talks about the uh sort of pitfalls of um 
the pitfalls of like trying to achieve mastery and the uh, master or just like proficiency in anything and like the sort of like instant success culture of like mm. capitalism. Uh, you might you might find it interesting, especially after reading all these like you know reading all these like chef stories yeah. and stuff and like Beatles stories. You know, yeah. I don't remember what's. I, I guess it's sort of a counterpoint to the the ten thousand hours guy. I don't fucking remember his name. Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell. You know, it's like, oh yeah, you got to get ten thousand hours. You'll get good at anything. But right. basically, the uh, thesis statement of mastery is that the uh, um. Is that you? Is that you? Kind of got to learn to love being on these like long plateaus of like oh. practice, and and that like it's basically the same for everything. Where it's like you'll have like an you know you'll have like sort of like initial spikes and yeah. long plateaus of just you know it's converting kind of like, things to muscle memory and kind of like weight loss. Yeah, it's like a weight yeah. loss thing where it's like it's you know it's uh you know proficiency is a lifestyle change. It's it's not a uh, you know, and, 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 you know, he talks about the people who get discouraged easily or, you know, people who get discouraged easily are the kinds that, uh, I mean, this is me where I'm like, where it's like people who are like kind of, kind of ADD about it and will like get, have like one fixated interest and then get into it. And then as soon as they hit like the first plateau, drop it, like move on to another thing, Yeah, yeah, I feel like you know, or, or it's people or the people who learn a bunch of sort of shortcuts to shortcuts to adequacy in a task and then kind of get frustrated when like they can't like make themselves better because like they didn't really refine any kind of skill set they just yeah. learned a bunch of shortcuts and like that's like another thing and who wrote the book wrote uh george this? leonard is the guy's okay. name uh yeah check it out it was you know it's like a hundred pages um i thought it was uh i thought it was quite interesting it's given me some interesting perspective on things going on in my own life uh Look at me! I'm 30 years old and I'm fucking bumping these self help books. <laughs> uh, yeah, speaking, I, I, I read it. I read it because it's on the uh, it's on the the Temple of Sets uh, reading list. They're the they're the sort of offshoot of the they're they're the current offshoot of the Church of Satan that I'm super into. So I yeah. have I have I'm reading it because of um, there's interesting applications for it just in like practice of like everything. Yeah. And, uh, and so they they actually highly recommend it. So I think it's it's a, it's a quite good it's a quite good book. It's a fantastic idea. Um, I might I might check it out. I was the reason I was asking who wrote it because was, there was they talked about. Um, Let me double check. I got that guy's name right. <laughs> okay. While 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 you're doing that, I think because uh, I remember uh, Freakonomics did a yeah George Gla- Leonard. That's the Glad- guy. Yeah, he did a Gladwell versus not versus, but like he got that from this Swedish or Scandinavian uh, uh, research team that did the whole ten thousand hours thing, and then mm-hmm. Malcolm Gladwell sort of he he popularized it and simplified it. Uh, mm-hmm. Where the guy who who came up with it's going kind of not not like completely uh, he didn't like completely refute it, but he's going you got to make sure that there's feedback involved. You have to do it with proper feedback, practicing with proper feedback. Yeah, so not, yeah, yeah. You're not like you don't want to like it's sort of like working out a muscle the wrong way and not knowing you're doing it, and so you're just working it. You're not updating. Yeah, it. you're just hurting yourself. You're yeah, not, like exactly. actually like. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. I'll, I'll check that out. And then yeah, it's, it's kind of it's good. It's kind of ha- it has a uh, uh, like literally on Amazon. It's like fucking like this thing's like it's like a couple bucks. It's like you, you can probably get a copy for like five bucks. Um, nice. Yeah, it's it's quite good. It's giving me some good perspective on my own on my own uh, health on my own personal health journey. Mm-hmm. So I've been I've been slacking. Let me tell you what. <laughs> I'm, I'm i i just took baby steps today i'm like all right i had a hamburger patty but i didn't have a bun i had a salad with it okay cool yeah man that's how you do it that's all you gotta do you is... know, that sort of thing yeah yeah um, yeah and then speaking of and then you'll you'll dig this because i <laughs> speaking of guys who like uh uh had add attention spans and then just end up doing like, all sorts of mastery and stuff uh i i finished the the biography of ausley stanley the third, otherwise known as the bear. The and bear. <laughs> you know, you know who this so is. Who is right? that? No, I have no idea. Who this oh, is. Shit. You, you, maybe, okay. I mean, maybe I do. I think you, you tell me. I think you do. But um, he is the um, 
probably he was he was probably the most famous uh, maker, uh, manufacturer, and distributor of American uh, lysergic acid dehydramide. Dehyd- uh, I always get the last word. Uh, LS- uh, LSD twenty five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. The bear. Cool, it's cool. It, he was the Grateful Dead sound guy. Oh, okay, okay. And so, um, but I was reading this book, and his dad, his parents were like, like Kentucky lawmakers. Like famous ones, like famous progressive Kentucky lawmakers. Oh shit! At one point, <laughs> his dad survived the Coral Battle of Coral Sea. Uh, oh shit! Was it a weird situation? And then um, he was he was put up in a he was brought up like he just had this strange upbringing where he was back and forth, but got really into like different things at different times. Mm-hmm. So like, and so like for example, he was like really into ballet. And so he started training for the ballet, and then that turned him on, turned him on to an all meat diet, <laughs> which is I'm like, oh shit, not, like, and and there's a strange thing because everything seems he's one of those guys where like he's sort of a mad scientist genius kind of guy, <laughs> but yeah. I don't believe a word he says, like, or <laughs> I I don't I don't trust it just because he's so it's like things like he's probably oh, got yeah. a lot of advice that like works for him and him exactly only. yeah exactly <laughs> like so he's talking about like sound equipment and things like that and like you know uh and he's very much a type a kind of character very much a control character he wants to control the dead when he was like basically he was the guy who kind of like organized he got their manage like in the like between the acid tests and like 710 ashbury uh-huh. i'll see was like putting him up in like a place in watts um uh, LA and then like also um on top of that he was he was like getting them sound equipment getting having them rehearse on ad nauseum like oh shit <laughs> recording a bunch of shows and so they kind of had a feedback to what they sounded like and a lot of different things like that where um he uh and things that would become staples for the the band moving forward um uh and then was yes yeah, so, a bit and then you know he was also the guy who came up with the famous wall of sound in the in the early seventies, which that if you ever see that, if you Google it, just Google Grateful Dead Wall of Sound, and you'll see this like <laughs> behemoth of a of a of a sound system. Let's see, Grateful Dead Wall of Sound. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, oh yeah, that's the so many speakers makes a standing wave and stuff like that. So there's like very some it's like pseudo scientific backing. Uh, uh-huh. like, and then like he went to prison for drugs, you know, for yeah. a drug maker. Um, and, uh, there he learned how to do metalworking and jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's always like doing something, but like, it's so strange because he was like, uh, he got like lung cancer and he, and he, uh, blamed it on all the secondhand smoke. And he's like, that's actually, that's probably one of the only things he got right then. <laughs> well, did I he? Imagine just, it's like, it, it depends on how much, you know, room you're in, like hanging out with the grateful thing. Cause he's, he, he didn't, he quit smoking. I mean, I think teens. just being around people in like the sixties and seventies, like before there was Smoky even rooms like, and stuff like that. For yeah. Sure. Before there was even like, you know, no, basically no smoking anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but before that was a whole thing. Like yeah, but not, before, not, yeah, not once did he blame the carcinogens based in the meat he was only eating. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a little that, that, that's probably not very good for you either. <laughs> yeah, but he managed to survive that, and then he got and then he, and then he was killed in a car accident shortly after. It's one of those like, God, he oh, got man. final destinations. Yeah, so <laughs> it was just, um, just a, just an interesting guy because like it's part of it. Part of it's like. I don't trust what you're saying at all. Like, it's one of those, like, you know, like, <laughs> uh-huh. what? Like, like and, I, and there's people I respect that, you know, certain people I respect that have that kind of like, yeah, yeah. I don't know where you got your information. And I don't know if I can prove you wrong. I just have a hunch that you are full <laughs> of shit. Like, is <laughs> the guy, is people who are speaking with too much confidence. It's like, I think so. Yeah. Cause it's, it's just like, you're speaking too confidently for your level of attainment. <laughs> yeah, I, that must be it. Because uh, he was talking like you know he would have trouble with like oh my mixes are better than everybody else's all the other mixes are terrible my mixes were great like okay that is just that makes sense he, just classic, he's go. a classic unreliable narrator yeah yeah except you know this time or it's it, like it, he he's he places all this like emphasis on like how awesome he is and it's like the details of his stories don't quite stack up 
Yeah, for, fortunately, <laughs> he wasn't really most. I mean, he someone he wasn't writing the book. He was being interviewed and telling the story, mm-hmm. uh, and and it was you know these are just like out outtakes and stuff. But it's a strange thing because the dude made um, the best acid ever. Apparently, like apparently it's not. Oh, shit. It's like he made the purest. It was he's almost like a Breaking Bad kind of Heisman character. Mm-hmm. Where, where like it was <laughs> purer than anything else that was being made, purer than the Sandoz in uh, in, in Sweden, oh damn or, okay that's in, cool in Swi- Switzerland Switzerland and, yeah and uh, uh, which is what all the European guys have but Pete Townsend when he's used to the Sandoz acid and then he goes to Monterey where he's making Monterey purple and it was just like oh it t- it just took him out and then they get oh Tommy. fuck yeah and that's how you get Tommy um, <laughs> oh shit yeah true <laughs> Tommy was very much like the the sort of not anti acid but it was kind of post it was it was kind of come it came together post um mm-hmm. his post uh, uh uh psychedelic phase so anyway that's, that's dope that's dope interesting dude uh life in the book is called the life and times of Ausley stan augustus Ausley stanley the third all right all or right. bear uh, bear is the main title so that was that was that was an interesting yeah, that book sounds to dope. burn through and it's like okay interesting cat interesting cat i'm you know like uh, he's sort of the godfather of sound men too, just like you know, on top of. But it's almost like a on a spiritual level. I think there's more technically savvy people in the business that I would trust more, like actual engineers. But this guy was just like a, just came from all over and had different vibes and different interests that kind of kept him a more colorful character. Mm-hmm. So there you cool. go. There. All right. So that's a good recommendation. I might check that out at some point. Yeah, yeah. He also said that you could find it. What was that book you were talking about? Like the uh, uh, that you could create your own. It, what was it? The cookbook. The uh, it was like a cookbook for you know acid and different drugs. Oh, the anarchist cook. Yeah, that, that one. What you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said, I mean, it's it, it, it's like yes, the 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 anarchist. It, it does teach you how to make drugs, but also it tells you how to like place bombs on bridges correctly to like. Destroy- <laughs> <laughs> maybe, don't, maybe don't maybe don't go uh, looking at stuff that one out. specifically that right one out. now when we're having a lot of like domestic terrorism problems in the country like the fbi is probably watching that <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean there's so, pdfs of that everywhere like you can find it it's it's not hard to find yeah like, you can yeah. buy it on amazon that's that's what elsie said you could look up the right directions to make that kind of acid he was just doing but he was just doing oh it better shit than okay else. so that's yeah. what he was saying it's like it's not that hard you just it's like a cookbook you follow directions <laughs> and uh, I'm feeling that way because I, f- I actually made a really killer Pomodoro sauce recently. So I'm like, yes, I finally made pasta sauce. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a bunch of tomatoes from our garden that were just not, we were just oh, going to eat them all. Yeah. So it's like, okay. So I grabbed the Tony Bourdain Appetites cookbook and followed his. See, we were that way with uh, Alexis's mom has chickens. So we, we have like all these fucking eggs. That we, we just have so many eggs. We don't know what to do with them. <laughs> so it's like we're just like ah throw an egg in anything it's like we're making some egg chili today <laughs> we're making that's chili great. omelets nice that's great well excellent all right. we've reached we've reached about an hour mark so that's actually perfect timing for us to kind of um we've done it we've we, actually we actually, we've actually made it through an entire episode yeah oh i didn't even fucking tell you i fucking i unironically enjoy new metal now i feel so oh, terrible no <laughs> <laughs> You d- dude, Woodstock, that Woodstock documentary got me fucked up, man. Oh. I was like, well, I was like, okay, I went and I went, I went and I got the, the CD, right? Like the Woodstock 99 CD. And I was like, listening to it, I was like, oh, dude, this is fucking, this kind of slaps, dude. And next thing you know, I'm fucking, I got every corn album sitting in my, sitting oh. in my iTunes. I think we have to <laughs> rework your contract. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> I don't, dude, I think I just like bad music. I think that's my problem, dude. <laughs> I listen to fucking. I'm listening to like prog rock and like Limp Biscuit right now, man. <laughs> you know, you you have a fairly more open musical mind than I think I do. So I think you know, uh, and I I tend to be fairly open. Um, but uh, I'm I. I, I, I uh, like listen i like i'm not endorsing kid rock as a person but i think everyone should go listen to i am the bull god because it's literally about doing so much acid that you think you're the devil and i can relate to that <laughs> i think we can all kind of relate to yeah. that yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I think uh, that wraps it up, everybody. Um, uh, All right, I guess we'll be seeing everybody on Friday. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, the be Friday. We'll be eventually, the Friday podcast. We'll be back on Friday. We'll we'll figure out if we want to do this every Friday or or every other Friday, depending on how much we actually consume, how much media we consume. In a, in a we'll week. do we'll do it as many Fridays <laughs> as we can take. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think you know uh, uh, what do you call it. Um, the every other one sounds pretty good to make sure, just so we're not like overstepping like oh i'm still working on this book i'm still working on that book yeah you we're gonna be uh we'll probably be getting regular dragon ball updates for the next six months because i plan on watching um i'm probably i'm planning on starting z after dragon ball so <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to start like a beefers anime show <laughs> uh i will not i will produce that but i can't participate in it it'll have to be with eric yeah you we'll get eric, eric on you, that you and eric should work on that and, yeah uh I know. I just I finally got on their uh, Discord uh, <laughs> that they're all on. So it's like, oh yeah, all these people that I I could easily like call um, <laughs> are now yeah, Discord. Is, I, I hate Discord. <laughs> I really don't like it. <laughs> I I don't. I'm not. A, I, I can't say I'm a fan. Um, but right now, it's a means of communicating to people I can't communicate with on a normal on a regular basis. I'm like, okay, cool. Just. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I finally like uh, I finally uh, swapped. My friend, my buddy Corey, I borrowed his PS3 last year up until now. Now I just swapped out for his PS4 because he picked up a PS5. So I'm going to be going. Oh, shit. I'm now going to run through all the PS4 games I missed in the last five years. So, What's um, your first one you're starting with? What's number um, one? Number one, well, I always have a sports game. So I'm, mm-hmm. I have the more updated MLB The Show 2021. Mm-hmm. But I'm... I'm uh, Mainly because you know this that I I bulked up I, I I stocked up on all those like uh great courses series and most of them are all oh, ancient yeah. Greece. So I'm going probably you know this is something I developed last uh, when I started playing like Assassin's Creed two and oh hell yeah Brotherhood just put, on, put on a and it was just like put on a podcast and it was learn just like while you play. yeah yeah so <laughs> it was that's like actually a great idea <laughs> yeah so I'm doing that with uh. I, I, you know, I do. I have, I have so much ancient Greek material to run through um, that I'll play it for Odyssey, and I usually do it when I'm like working out or doing something more physically like active mm-hmm. because I feel that's more in tune with some sort of like um, ancient classical Greek ethos. Um, so, so I do that, <laughs> um, or I'm in, the, or I'm just like in certain beaches in certain places doing certain things. So anyway, that's that's it'll be it'll be uh, the Assassin's Creed. Uh, currently, it's downloaded right now. Is uh, um, Odyssey and Origins, and then um, and then uh, Red Dead Two. I haven't I haven't started Red Dead Two. Yeah, those aren't too shabby. Yeah, that's a lot of that. That's a lot of that's a lot of hours. Yeah, <laughs> yo, so, you gotta check out you gotta check out Death Stranding, dude. Like that, <laughs> it's kind of disturbing now. It's it's kind of weird to re- remember yeah, that, that Death Stranding came out before um, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's I, basically. I have... Uh, the Phantom Pain is also on a C. I have, he, he gave me a copy of the Phantom Pain. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Play Phantom which is Pain. where like all the Punish Steve stuff comes from. Yeah, you, you got know, to like that. it's all that Punish Steve shit is more is comes from Punish Snake and Diamond Dogs yeah. and all that stuff. So like, you know, a lot of a lot of in jokes that you know like like <laughs> yeah. like like Afghanistan's a big place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> rings rings pretty true here. So anyway, the it's. Um, that's what I'm going to do for sure is, 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 uh, run through those and that'll be cool beans. That'll be fun. So yeah. All right. This is Steve, Steve's gooming adventures to be continued. Totally. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, I will, I will dip for now. I'm going to make some food and then get to the, uh, get to the Clark Kent gig. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, until next time. All right. All right. Take care, man. I'll, I'll, uh, All right. See you later. See you soon. Adios. <laughs>